Jeff Gold is back with us. He's been following this case since the beginning. Marie Hall, let's talk about some of the high points, at least on the prosecution side. She's motive, right? She's the jealous motive for Jody Arias. Jody should be going to Cancun, right? Not Marie Hall. Well, according to Jody, uh, she, you know, she didn't want to go. But I'm going to say this. We, it is perfectly appropriate that we go back over this and look at the state's case. It's been a, a five weeks of defense testimony and more. Uh, and now we go to Mimi. Mimi is probably the key, uh, the motive, the reason why Jody did it. Remember what happened uh, uh, with uh, Bianca, Matt McCarty's girlfriend. Uh, Jody drives an hour and a half uh, to go confront her. Well, guess what? It's not a big jump to say she drove 10 and a half hours to confront Travis over Mimi. And who is Mimi? Maybe she's the good Mormon girl that Travis really does want to marry, not the bad girl Jody, not the sex crave Jody. So Mimi is key. All right, and talk about, you mentioned the timeline. You're an attorney, Jeff. How do you make sure, if you're Juan Martinez, uh, that they don't forget all this? It's been so long, and you've had all this drama around Jody Arias' testimony. Will they remember Mimi? Well, I think that uh, Juan is going to have a perfect opportunity if anything is raised as to Travis uh, with uh, Alice LaViolette. Uh, to go in cross and bring up these kinds of things. In addition, he has rebuttal. So the, the, the way these cases work is the state's case, the defense case, and then there is a state's rebuttal. So he'll be able to bring some of it home. He doesn't get to relitigate the whole case, but since the defense has brought up uh, this domestic violence and post-traumatic stress, the state will have a lot that it can talk about. And Mimi is, uh, is critical because I think she's the whole motive for this. Yeah. Do you think right now as it stands in this case that the jury has clear motive in their mind. Do you think they see Jody Arias as uh, the woman in the jealous rage? Wow, you know, I mean, the defense has been has been harping on the fact that uh, Jody's the victim. Boy, uh, you wouldn't even remember there was a murder victim in this case, uh, the way we hear it. There's uh, poor Jody, poor Jody, poor Jody. Well, how about poor Travis? Uh, he's the one who was butchered, and now, today, we get a chance to go back and listen to that, and uh, we got to the point just now of where uh, he's dead. Uh, uh, you know, look, that's what this case is about. It's the murder of Travis Alexander, and uh, Jody is accused of it, but if she had her way, she'd be saying she's the victim here. Well put. And you guys are chiming in on uh, you're tweeting me at Michael Anos HLN. Continue to do so. Is it, Again, it's fascinating to listen to this. I know, Jeff, yeah, you like to tweet as well, because as we listen to Marie Hall, we're, we're going back. Jeff Gold, our defense attorney, we, uh, couple, we hit on a couple new topics there, Jeff, over the last uh, couple of segments as we listen to Marie Hall. One, the term stalker thrown out there. Now, she did not say that Travis told her, yes, it's Jody Arias, but you still got the phrase out there. What do you think about how that's going to play in court? Well, you have to be very close to the vest on that if you're the prosecutor because there is not enough evidence to link up Jody to it. If there was enough evidence to do it, Juan Martinez would have tried to get it in as what's called a prior bad act, uh, something showing motive, uh, intent, method of operation, uh, much as he was able to get in this prior uh, uh, rush to uh, Bianca's. Uh, to confront her, if he, she, if, she, if he had evidence that she actually did the stalking, uh, then boy, that would have been very good for the state. So he has to play it very carefully. It comes in because it's factually what was going on. There was a stalker, in, uh, at least in terms of uh, uh, Travis's mind and what was going on. But he cannot say that it's uh, uh, Jody. And, and I don't know that there's enough circumstantial evidence for the court to even allow him to infer it in argument, but we'll have to see about that. You know what we did here? We heard about Prius, about uh, Travis's Prius, you know, in the garage. That doesn't sound like uh, an aggressive domestic violence uh, 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 aggressor to me. It sounds like a, a green, everybody loves you kind of guy. Uh, that's what Marie Hall's doing. And I'll tell you something else. It's very crafty of Juan when he did this. He's made Mar uh, Mimi, Marie Hall, be the pious one, you know, the one right. to speak for the Mormon church, the good girl versus Jody, the bad devil on his shoulder. Right. And as you pointed out, as last time we spoke, that potentially she was the one that Travis wanted to have a future with. She was the one uh, that he could potentially marry. You know, that that then she even inferred that, that he liked her more than she liked him, which potentially could make Jody Arias all the more angry. Uh, another thing that, again, got into court or at least said in court was the, the slash tires. How damaging could that be for the defendant here? 
Well, again, you know, the prosecutor's got to be careful because he's got to, you know, link it up to Jody. Those things occurred and he can bring them in. The court has allowed the information in and finding that it's not, it's, it, there's more probative value than prejudicial, but it's, it's close to the line there because he's going to want to make the inference who did that in, in closing arguments. And I know that uh, the defense is going to argue vociferously that he can't make that inference, that he can say those things occurred, but there's not enough to say uh, it's Jody. Uh, we'll see if he can argue, if he's allowed to argue with then. It's certainly what everybody believes that Jody was the stalker. And let, let's talk about, you know, again, as you mentioned it, and let's go a step further with uh, Marie Hall as the pious one. She, she knows and lives the faith, or at least it seems, right? If they were going to go to Cancun, she was comfortable because she was going to stay with a family and she was going to be in the same room with a little girl. When they get into uh, the sins and, and fornication and adultery, how's that playing out here? Why is Juan Martinez going there, Jeff? Well, it's great to see it the way uh, we are doing it, you know, looking at it again now, because we know what Jody has said. And there's something about a trial, especially a long trial like this, uh, which should expose the truth, and you get it. You get here the idea that maybe Travis was a player, maybe uh, Mimi Hall knows that, and she really doesn't want any parts of him as a, uh, uh, a potential mate, but she's willing to go to Cancun to have fun as long as she can sleep in another bedroom with a girl, as a, as a good Mormon girl would want to do. Uh, and you get this, that, you know, uh, he may be a player, but that doesn't mean that he was a domestic violence aggressor or that he uh, was anything of the sort. So I think some of that came across from Drody's testimony. You kind of believe some of it. And after all, we listened to the tape. We know that it seemed Travis liked the sex. Yeah. So this is, not a, this is not a guy for Mimi. So she seems very believable, and it's pretty believable that when she says he didn't have another girl to take and we think that Jody is the one who wanted to go, that might have set her off, and maybe that's exactly the, what right. happened in the case. All right, Jeff, I know you're going to continue to listen. Viewers, stay tuned as well, as we're not now going to hear from 